Hello, my name is Farrakh. Today we'll be talking about how to set up the software necessary to participate in, or to host, a Link to the Past multi-world randomizer. Before we begin, there are three pieces of software that you will need. The software is linked in the video description. The first thing you'll need is SNES 9X Multitroid. It's a particular version of SNES 9X that's capable of using Lua scripts. You'll want version 1.6, Win32, once that's downloaded, the second piece of software you'll need is called QUSB to SNES. You can find this inside of its GitHub repository underneath the releases page. Always take the most recent release. Inside of assets, you'll want to download this 7-zip file. If your computer can't open 7-zip files, you will have to download 7-zip. The last piece of software you'll need is Berserker's Multi-World Utilities. You can find this on his GitHub page within releases. Again, always the most recent release, and you want to download the zip file. Once all that's done, you want to set up your YAML file. Now a YAML file is just a set of configuration options that allow you to tune your ROM the way that you would like to play it and let everyone else still have a multi-world together. For example, if you want to play a key sanity, your friend wants to turn on Animizer, but someone else just wants to play an item randomizer, the three of you can each play the type of randomizer you would like and still participate in a multi-world together. This YAML file can be found inside of Berserker's folder, inside of Players, and it's called easy.yaml. So that YAML file looks like this. There are comments that describe very well what each option does. And this file is what's called a weighted file which just means the larger a number you give to an option, the better the chance that option will be applied. So right now we have map shuffle at z uh, on zero and off one. This means that we are guaranteed map shuffle will not occur. If we wanted a 50-50 chance, we could set them both to one. If I wanted to have 90% chance of map shuffle, I could set on to nine and off to one. You should set your name in this file as it is what will appear inside of the emulator and on the client when you send and receive items. You can also set your ROM options inside of this file down at the bottom. If you'd like to play as a sprite that's non-standard, simply add it to the list and weight it how you would like. Once your YAML file is correctly configured, you're able to send it to the host. If you happen to be playing the Doors version of the multi-world, there is a separate version of the YAML that contains a door shuffle section so that you can wait that as well. The version of the YAML that contains this section can be found in Berserker's multi-world repository inside of the Doors branch. Once your YAML file is successfully configured, you should rename it to something more meaningful. This will allow the host or the person generating the ROM to retain your file in case you'd like to play with them again later. So once your file is configured and you've found a group of people to play with, the person generating the ROM will ask you to give them your YAML file. So go ahead and send that over. At this point, we need to launch QUSB to SNES. That's inside the folder that we just downloaded, and it's called QUSB to SNES.exe. Double clicking on that, looks like it does nothing, but the program does launch inside of your system tray. You should right click on it, hover over devices, and make sure that enable Lua Bridge, SNES 9X, and BizHawk is activated. You know it is if there's a blue square around the Super Nintendo controller. If you accidentally launch this twice, you'll get an error message that will pop up, simply stating that you can't do this more than once, that the port is already in use. This doesn't have any effect on the multi-world and doesn't break anything. So once you get QUSB to SNES launched and set properly, your host should give you a ROM. Once you've retrieved that, Go ahead and launch SNES 9X, and this is the multi-troid version that we just downloaded a moment ago, and load the ROM.
Once the ROM is loaded, click on the file menu, hover over Lua scripting, and click on New Lua Script Window. This will open a box asking you to find a Lua script to run. So click on Browse, and the script that we want is inside the same folder as our custom version of SNES9X Multitroid. So open that folder, go inside of the Lua folder, and you're looking for multibridge.lua. Click Open, and you should see that you've been assigned a name. The name isn't important, but you will see it pop up again later. At this point, if you would like to use EmoTracker for auto-tracking, it does have support for multi-world. So, launch EmoTracker, drag it down to a size where it's not consuming your whole screen, and then right-click on the robot face in the bottom right of EmoTracker. Hover on SNES, and click on Lua. The robot face will turn yellow, indicating that EmoTracker is now waiting for a connection. To enable auto tracking, go back to your emulator, click on File, hover over Lua scripting, and we need to create another new Lua script window. From here, we click on Browse again. The Lua script we need for EmoTracker is inside EmoTracker's installation directory. For me, that's the D drive inside of Program Files by 86, inside of EmoTracker, inside the Connectors folder inside SNES 9X, and finally, connector.lua. Clicking open on this should tell you that you have now established a connection, and you'll see the robot face in the bottom right corner of EmoTracker turn green. This indicates that EmoTracker has successfully connected. The last thing we need to do for you to be able to play in a ROM, or to play in a multi-world, is to launch the client. So, open Berserker's multi-world folder, and click on Berserker Multi-Client.exe. Here you'll see that it automatically connects to that same name that you saw in your Lua window before, and it asks you to enter a multi-world server address. The host of your multi-world game will give this address to you. In our case, since it's a local server, we connect locally. And you'll see that we have connected successfully to the game. At this point, you're done, and you're able to play in the multi-world. Everything is set up and ready to go. So grab your controller, grab a drink of water, and get ready for some chaos. If you're interested in hosting a multi-world game, there are a few extra steps that we need to take, and there are a few extra things that we should talk about beyond what we already have. So I'm just going to close what I currently have open, and I'm going to end the server that I had running. And I'll get rid of this ROM so we don't make mistakes. So, to go on with hosting, the first thing you'll need to do is open Berserker's multi-world folder and make sure that the base ROM is included in this folder. You'll see that it's already here because I've used this to set up a host before, but when you first download Berserker's repository, that file is not present. So you need to find it on your own, and that's up to you, and put it inside of that base directory. The file is called Zelda no Densetsu Kamigami no Triforce Japan.sfc. This is the version 1.0 Japanese ROM of Link to the Past. Once you have that done, make sure that you have successfully port forwarded port 38281 to your system. That is the default port for both Berserker's Multiworld Client and Bontas. Again, that's port 38281. Once port forwarding is set up, Go ahead into your players directory and collect YAML files from your players and put them inside of this directory. When we generate the ROM, or the multi-world, one ROM will be created for each YAML file inside of this directory. We should also take a look at host.yaml. This is a set of configuration options that allow you to configure how your game will be generated and what things can be set for the host. Location checkpoints indicates the number of points you get, or each player gets, when they collect an item. So if you set this to 2, they get 2 points. Most people leave this at 1. The hint cost defaults to 1000, which effectively disables hints. Most people leave this at 50 or 60, because that allows each player to get 3 or 4 hints per game. 
You can also set other options, like whether to create a spoiler log, whether to zip things, or whether you'd like it to be a race ROM. Once you have your host.yaml configured the way you'd like, we can go ahead and run berserker multi mystery.exe. This will open a command line window and do a few things for us. The first thing it does is it scans our players directory and looks for the number of YAML files within, lists the names that it finds, and tells you how many players it has found. It runs the command necessary to create it, and if you've got a spoiler created, will automatically create the spoiler. You'll see here that it has created a zip file which contains all of the ROMs, and it has placed them inside of a folder called Multi Mystery, which has now been created inside of Berserker's folder. I'm going to take this ROM that has been created for me and put it on my desktop so I can use it in just a moment. This folder also contains the multi data and the spoiler.txt, as well as the zip file, which contains the ROMs for your players. The client will also tell you what your public IP address is. This is the address that you should give to your players so that they're able to connect to your server. And finally, a new game has already been started and is being hosted. So to confirm that we can connect to this game, we're going to do what we did before and try to connect. So let's go ahead and launch our SNES 9X. We'll load the ROM file that we just generated on our desktop. And then we'll open a new Lua script window and browse for our multi-bridge file, which is inside the multi-troid directory. This is the only file that is necessary to participate in multi-worlds. Emo tracker is completely optional. We've been named Cloud Kicker. So let's go grab our client and attempt to connect to the server. All right, when you first host, it's possible that your server, or rather your client, will say that no player has connected. If this happens, it's because the server, for whatever reason, doesn't like generate output immediately. So if you just go to your server and press enter, you'll see that it begins responding just fine. But the server is working. All right, and since we have joined the game, we have successfully connected. And now you are successfully hosting a multi-world server. There is another way to create a server and to host. So I'm going to close what I have open. And we'll talk about the new or the, the second way to do this. So I'm also going to get rid of the multi mystery folder here. Inside of Berserker's folder, there's a file called Berserker multi creator.exe. This opens a GUI and allows you to visually customize the things that you want your server to have. The base ROM here has already been set, but this won't work unless the base ROM actually is present inside of the directory. The Enemizer path is already included inside of here, and Enemizer is included inside of Berserker's uh, packaged file that you've just downloaded. So that's already taken care of. The number of worlds to create can be listed down below. Let's create say three of them. You can enter player names if you would like. It's a comma separated list. And once you've set these options the way you'd like, you can simply click on generate patched ROM. I'm actually going to open this directory first because I do have some previous files in here that we're going to get rid of. So click on generate patched ROM. This will generate each ROM necessary, name them successfully, and output them inside of that directory. So here you'll see the multi-data file has been created, and each ROM for the players has been created as well. And each player's name has been included on the ROM file to allow them to successfully identify which ROM should be theirs. At this point, you should transfer these ROM files to your players, and take the multi-data, put it somewhere you'll be able to find it, And go back into Berserker's folder. Click on Berserker multi-server.exe 
And this is asking you to locate a multi-world data file. So we just put that on our desktop and press open. You'll see then that the server is now hosting the game and anyone is now able to connect. That's everything you need to know in order to successfully play in or to host a Link to the Past multi-world game. Good luck and Godspeed.